changed. No, 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 no. You kill your enemies, and then you make <sighs> peace with what is left. It's no longer about nations, ideologies, or ethnicity. Fuck you, Frenchman. It's an endless series of proxy battles fought by mercenaries and machines. War and its consumption of life has become a well-oiled machine. Jesus, we should have gassed all of them. War has changed. If we've learned one thing from the Greeks, it's this, that all great tragedies involve a woman. And our story's Helen of Troy would be Rage After Storm. Now, for those of you unfamiliar with who Rage After Storm is, she is not Styx's biological sister, Spoonclank. Instead, she's a YouTuber that accumulated nearly 100,000 subscribers over the course of six months. Her popularity was explosive. She was networking with everyone, appearing on multiple streams. People were recommending her to their audiences nearly daily. She seemed to be a golden child, someone who captured a certain demographic and held its attention. That is until she decided to talk about a subject which is apparently forbidden, or as Trout and Tears would say, verboden. So, after many of you have speculated about my stance on race, especially my recent one, I've decided to make a video about it. Because heck, I love talking about things that will probably get me kicked off YouTube and every other social media website. Now this video, and the reaction to it, would be the impetus, the genesis, for an autism festival which would take place over the course of four fucking months, dragging its ass across nearly every aspect of social media, from YouTube to Twitter, from Facebook to 4chan. And it would include an entire cast of characters from multiple groups on the internet. But the driving force behind it, the protagonist of this tragedy, would be one individual by the name of Prout and T. And as you'll see, as these videos unfold, is a story that is a vengeance, of wrath and anger of hubris, total fucking warfare, the sort of battle online that only a high-class exceptional individual would ever engage in willingly, that would end up costing Kraut nearly everything he had, to the point of where he had to leave the internet, out of shame. And yes, like all great Greek tragedies, we even have mythological creatures. Granted, they're not Chimera, but there are a few pregnant Trouts here and there. Now, with this particular video, I want to put forward a theory, a theory on why Kraut and T began a destructive cycle that drove him off the internet. And it all begins with Rage After Storm. Keep this in mind because it's going to be very relevant indeed. Now what I'd like to do is establish a timeline and the reactions which occurred within that timeline. Rage's video, Race is Real, went up on June 24th, four days later. On Adam Worski's podcast number 55 on June 28th, Kraut and T, among others, discussed their reaction to the video. Welcome back to another Worski Live. I'm here with Chris Worski. What's up? And we have a full house today. We yeah. got Kraut and T, Some Black Guy, Kasara, and Jeff Holiday. What's going on, everyone? Now, there are many golden moments that take place within this particular chat. Many of the guests take umbrage with what they see as dog whistling, that rage is signaling to real racists, to the neo Nazis out there with this video that she is one of them. They don't like the sources which are discussed. It just looks like she's just repeating what the Daily Storm article says. She, she just read the article, said, OK, this sounds right. Uh, apparently didn't put any effort into questioning any of it, and then said, OK, this is how it is. Fair enough. Maybe the Daily Stormer wasn't the way to go. Maybe she should have looked for information from other sources, like, say, a documentary. <laughs>
Oh, oh, that's that's a, woo, that's a bit harsh. Race realism is is actually really fucking pervasive. Uh, Stephen Molyneux fucking talks about this shit all the time, and he yeah. talks out of his fucking ass. Uh, I made two videos about race realism. These people fucking followed me for six months making sock accounts just so they can get around me muting them being like why aren't you debating this I'm, there's no fucking debate you to be honest cards. those goddamn neo-nazis and their fucking frog alt accounts thank god you didn't do anything to fucking encourage that thank god you didn't take their symbol and co-opt it into some e-bombs world tier shit huh jeff the whole point of kekistan is taking back pepe from you douche nozzles trying to, like, meme your way into some sort of interesting political position. Nobody cares. Nobody cares about you. Nobody ever fucking cared about you. You're cringy as fuck. The whole meme is just to take the piss out of you. Maybe, maybe you shouldn't be shooting shots across the bow if you don't want fire fucking returned. But nonetheless, on the stream, multiple things are brought up. They don't like her sources. They think it's dog whistling. They don't like, uh her approach to the subject, and there's some definite hostility towards the alt-right, towards race realists, towards white nationalists, or anybody that really sees the, the issue differently than they perhaps see it. But the shit show proper didn't happen until the very next day, on June 29th, when Kraut and T tweeted this out, at Kipper Central, you might want to look into the views of one of your contributors, Rage After Storm, and almost immediately... The reaction is, seriously? Now, Rage had written for Kipper Central, which is a UKIP account. And here Crowd is, one day after discussing and mocking her video, writing to them to say that you need to look into your contributor, Rage After Storm. The reaction was not friendly, if you can put it that way. But there's another more interesting reaction that followed fairly quickly afterwards. This was at 9.31 a.m. on June 29th. At 12.05 p.m. on June 29th, a few hours later from when Kraut had messaged them, Kipper Central responds, We can confirm we are looking into one of our writer's recent videos. No further comment will be made until we have reviewed the video. Now, the thing about Kipper Central is, it's a relatively small account. Currently, it has 744 followers, and that's not a number that's drastically changed overnight. They didn't just lose half a million. It's always been a small channel. So you can probably imagine their shock when they get this response to their announcement about a writer on their website. Great, it's Rage After Storm, and she appears to be a racist pig. Fill us in on what steps you take. Thank you. That's from Soledad O'Brien. Soledad O'Brien knows who Rage After Storm is. Soledad O'Brien is contacting a fucking Twitter account with 700 followers. And very shortly after that, on June 30th, the next day, Kipper Central releases this statement regarding Rage. We have decided to suspend one of our writers, Rage After Storm, following a series of tweets and the content of one of her YouTube videos. When Rage first started writing for us, she was very down-to-earth and agreed with many of our other writers on many things. However, very recently, she has changed her views and has become sympathetic to ideologies we cannot endorse or facilitate. Unless she reforms her thinking... We will have no option but to remove Rage from Kipper Central entirely. We hope she takes this opportunity to change her ways and rethink whether this is the best direction for her. To be clear, we will not tolerate Rage's current views and standpoints, and people with these views are not welcome in Kipper Central. So within one week of her video, she has been disavowed from the UKIP organization which she was associated with. The reaction, the lashback that happened online following this was a bit extreme, but it really ramped up on July 24th when Rage After Storm deleted her YouTube account and her Twitter account because it was around this time that people went back and saw what Kraut had written to Kipper Central and confronted him with it, stating that he had played a hand in basically driving Rage After Storm off of the internet. Kraut did not have the best of reactions to that uh, apparent viewpoint. He saw it as an attack, an attack on him from the alt-right, from race realists, from white nationalists, from the very people he was mocking in the stream when he made fun of her video. One day after she had shut down her accounts, Kraut released this on his Twitter. I find it fucking hilarious that some of you compared the tweet I made to the letter-writing campaign Thunderfoot had to endure. And the best about all of this? Wait for it. Wait for it. 
I actually contacted her employer, who told me in person that I am absolutely in no way responsible for her being fired, and making it absolutely clear that it was their decision, that many of their writers watch her videos as well, and that many more contacted them by means other than tweets. You, who manufactured outrage over this, are a bunch of pathetic, whimpering little shits. Do you really have so little to add to the conversation that you have to pretend that someone has no personal responsibility for her actions and pin it to someone who critiqued her views? Are your arguments so pathetically weak that you have to devolve into drama shit-flinging? You are a joke. A massive fucking joke. And yes, I'm looking at you there, Edgy Sphinx, Cedarwood, and Blondie. Especially Cedarwood and Edgy. You too? You after complaining over moral grandstanding? Complaining that people opposed to you do too much drama and no substantive debate over issues? And what do you do about these complaints? You go looking for shit to fling like the little shit flinging mental midget monkeys that you actually are. Pathetic. Tweets with screen caps to follow. Oh, but Kraut wasn't done there. Oh boy, it's almost like actions have fucking consequences. Actions have consequences, huh, Kraut? Actions have consequences. Really? Really? Really makes you- Oh, shit! What? My codex going off! Who's that? Oh, it's Sour Snake! What's, what's that snake? Actions have consequences! Oh, okay, thanks, buddy. Thanks for checking in. The very next day, after all those Twitter spats, Kraut releases this video, Artificial Outrage. You can tell from the like-dislike ratio that things did not go... They did not go smoothly. And it's no surprise, really. Listen to who he blames blames for this artificial outrage. This nonsense of course took its path down the road of ridiculousness, most amusingly with the paragons of ethical behavior joining with them, the doxing AIU scumfuck crowd. And of course, half of Twitter's alt-right frog accounts about how I supposedly went after her private supposed job, how I tried to censor her, a whole lot of other bullshit. And he has a few things to say about rage in particular, and about Kipper Central's decision to disassociate or disavow her. Rage after the storm didn't have a paying job at Kipper Central. Kipper Central distanced itself from her anyway because, duh, what a shock. They don't wish to associate with racists. But one of the more interesting pieces from the video itself is when he addresses the tweet that he had sent to Kipper Central. I want you to pay particular attention to how he words this and to the tweets that he shows while he's talking. I tweeted at that UKIP blog's Twitter handle to maybe take a closer look into the views of their contributor, Rage After Storm. And what happened after that? Well, 20 minutes after I made that tweet, I started thinking that it was childish and stupid and proceeded to delete that tweet and make two statements on Twitter that I had gone too far with this and that it was childish and that I had consequently deleted that tweet. It was childish and stupid and he deleted it out of shame and the tweet he's highlighting says you were attempting to de-platform someone because you disagreed with them and his response was acknowledging it. I know. I know that's what I was attempting to do. A lot of the discussion around the events of what happened with Rage After Storm about did Kraut have a hand in getting her disassociated or disavowed? Did he have a hand in pushing her off the internet? Focus on the idea of the consequence, but rarely talk about the intent. Kraut is openly discussing the intent right here. He was attempting to get her deplatformed. There's no arguing about that. He says it himself. He acknowledges it in the tweet response. But what I'd really love to know is what changed from him saying this on Andy Worski a month ago. I'm mainly looking at her sources. I'm not going to make any kind of emotional or moralizing arguments. To saying this in the video. And in the end, your Nazi bitch queen rage after the storm as much as you would like to fantasize about her being silenced, packed her bags and ran away like a little bitch. I'm not going to get emotional. I'm not going to make this personal to racist Nazi little bitch queen. It seems like you might have gotten a little emotional. And that's really the crux of it all, isn't it? Getting emotional, becoming invested, getting angry and wanting revenge. Revenge against who? Well, revenge against those goddamn people that were disliking that video, that were tweeting at him, that were commenting about his actions and his viewpoints. Those fucking alt-writers, those race realists, just like their little Nazi bitch queen, 
rage after storm. They need to be taken down a peg. They need to be taught a fucking lesson. And who better to do it than Kraut and his posse of intellectuals? I'm talking high-tier academics, YouTube, scientists. Most well-known and credentialed scientists of this YouTube community. And so you can see how this one video by this one content creator can gain momentum, can snowball out of control, and motivate Kraut through all of the different ripple effects around it to set on a path of his own self-destruction. Everything he has done for the last four months is to get petty revenge at a perceived slight from a political group or those purporting to believe in a certain ideology. He was simply pissed off. And the things we'll be discussing in these videos, they're not just about past events. They pertain to things that are happening currently and are going to be happening in the future. You saw it yourself on the Andy Worski podcast. There were two people there that ended up in that Discord with Kraut. His 24-hour op Discord we'll be talking about next video. There was Kraut himself and Jeff Holiday. You know, it's crazy. I, 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 wasn't there somebody else? I mean, it was, there was Kraut, yeah, and there was Jeff Holiday, but was anybody else in that call when all this shit started? When the very origin event that led to Kraut creating a Discord to go after people? Was there anybody else there aside from Kraut and Jeff Holiday? I don't, Andy, can you, can you give me some information here? So we just finished Worski Live number 55. Uh, Kraut was there, Chris, Jeff, Kasara, some black guy, uh, Dave Cullen, and um, Based Mama swung by at the end. Based Mama, of course. Based Mama from the Discord with Kraut and Jeff Holiday and all the other people running 24-hour ops. Based Mama, who's running an event called Kilroy. Kilroy, an event that basically disinvited people that have right-wing beliefs. You know, all those identitarians, those icky alt-writers, those people that don't align politically with what she likes. Like, here's my idea. Okay, if you want to be like race separatists, how about all you guys who don't want to do that, you just stay in your own areas and fuck yeah. off the rest of us alone. How weird and coincidental that she would be there at the birthing of Kraut's vendetta, and then also in the Discord, and then also making decisions about Kilroy, which somehow shit on people that are right-wing. That's That really makes me think. That's going to be, that'll be fun to dig into. Put on my tinfoil hat. Let's go fucking crazy with this shit. Because I'll tell you, I'm here for the fucking laughs. And what's coming up next is some of the cringiest fucking shit from so many people. It's, it's mind blowing. This originally was going to be one video, but these autistic fucks can't cool it off for like five minutes and let me complete it. It's just, it's just fucking day after day of golden quotes. I can't, I can't even go over a list of the shit that's coming up. We've got YouTube scientists. We've got people getting cucked. It's just, it's some crazy shit. So allow me to introduce you to the concept of a new type of advent calendar. We're not celebrating baby Jesus. We're celebrating Spurgs. We're going to call this an autism calendar. Every, every day's a new surprise. So prepare yourself for part two, my fellow academics. I'm Pickle Rick! Lake trout spawn on the lake, not in streams where they can be eaten by predators. All of the, it's like fish and live bait. Look at that fat small mouth. Come to the inside of this rainbow trout here, and we're gonna make a cut along the back. Jesus, we should have gassed all of them. War has changed. Previously on Mad Men. And in the end, your Nazi bitch queen rage after the storm as much as you would like to fantasize about her being silenced, packed her bags and ran away like a little bitch. Sounds a little bit emotionally invested. A little bit, uh, a little bit pissed off, but luckily it was just him. Nobody else took part in this. It was all just, cr oh, wait a minute. It's because of the Rage After Storm thing. Okay. We made a video in response to us bullying Rage After Storm. And make no mistake, Oh, we bullied the shit after Rage, Rage After the Storm. We bullied her off social media. She took herself off that shit. We bullied the fuck out of her. Have a good I... one, guys. Oh, oh boy. Look, it looks like they're a cult or something. Now, Rage, you knew when you came to Kekistan that racism is not tolerated. How do you plead? Through your silence, you have admitted your guilt. Hey now, my fellow Kekistani. You can't shadow it with an attitude like that. What are you doing, Jeff? Now, for those of you just joining, and even for those that have watched part one, there might be a few questions in your mind. Who the fuck are these people? And what exactly is going on? Well, it, it's my hope with this series of videos 
to try to sum it up as best I can. Now, part one was the motivation. You don't really need to know exactly who they are. You just need to know the underlying reason for what's about to happen. And if I were to sum that up as best I could, Kraut got angry at a girl on the internet and spent the next six months waging an online jihad against her. How highly academic of him. Now with part two, I'm going to start to clear some things up. Crowd and T is a YouTuber. A YouTuber that likes to make typically anti-SJW videos. Rage After Storm happened to take a different approach. He was more right-wing than he was. They had a disagreement over race realism, and he lit her up on a live stream. The very next day, he tweeted at a place she wrote for. Three weeks after that, she left the internet, and people brought up the fact that he was attempting to basically de-platform her. This ended up enraging Kraut. He became bitter and pissed off at the people that kept bringing this up, and he began to see Rage After Storm and those that associate with her political ideology, or even those that were sympathetic to her, as an enemy that needed to be destroyed. So how did our little German general decide to go about this? Well, our Trout, he's a, uh, he's a strong swimmer. He's going to go right up that fucking stream. He doesn't care. He's going to read all those books. 800 page books, hand them over. I'm going to learn everything I can. I'm even going to work with academics, highly intelligent intellectual YouTubers. Most well known and credentialed scientists of this YouTube community. And we're going to kick the alt right's ass. So Kraut dedicates nearly a month of his time to honing his skill. He's studying biology. Genetic and no, we have fucking not. We have not done a knockout study on nigger dick size. We have done a knockout study. No! He's preparing himself for the final showdown. He's going to release a video that's going to make the alt-right beg for mercy. All those filthy race realists are going to go crying home to mama because Kraut and T is here to drop some knowledge bombs on their ass. Dude, just talk to my fucking scientist. Or at least that's what he had hoped was going to happen, which turned out to be the opposite of reality. His very first video wasn't too well received, and almost immediately people began to reply to it. They were looking at some of the finer details of the argument that he presented. Uh, one man in particular seemed to catch Kraut's ire. The K-type sexual reproduction strategy is distinctively mammalian. <laughs> no, the K-type reproduction strategy is not distinctively mammalian. There are plants, Kraut, that are K-type. What the fuck are you talking about? The male does not remain with the female. The pregnancy is very short with the female. <laughs> Kraut, trouts, brown trouts do not get pregnant. <laughs> Did you just say the pregnancy is very short? happens through the trout swimming up river to mate the male does not remain with the female the pregnancy is very short <laughs> the pregnancy is very short Trout. brown trouts don't get pregnant along with the frenchman there were others that made videos that pissed kraut off this uh didn't deter him remember he's on a holy crusade to teach these people a lesson so he decided he wasn't gonna just double down he wasn't going to triple down. He was quadrupling down on the autism by creating an honest-to-God literal internet war room to wage jihad against people that were laughing at him. He was already angry enough about Rage After Storm. He was angry enough about the backlash he got from it. But now he's got a fucking Frenchman asking him where the pregnant trout are. He couldn't handle that shit. He couldn't stand being mocked. And so he sets about creating the Academy of Discord. And as you can see, its ranks are filled with only the finest of individuals. Look at these accredited YouTube scientists. Do you see the parentheses? Can you handle that high-level intellect? I just, oh God, I'm going to need to huff a few here just to be able to stand shoulder to shoulder with these giants. Oh, fuck yes. Oh, breathe deeply. They're YouTube scientists. So what subjects of study was this Harvard of the Internet uh, focusing its attention on? Those are just people of interest. I recognize some of these names. They're getting added on and taken off. I mean, you've got Alt Hype, you've got Black Pigeon Speaks, David Cedarwood, Red Ice TV, Warren Southern, Millennial Woes. You know, I recognize these names. They all have something they all have something in common. I can't quite put my finger on it. But, you know, that that's harmless. It's not like they called it 
targets or something. Like it was some weird internet mafioso hit list that a bunch of autistic internet spurgs compiled together for some weird fucking vendetta. Oh wait, they totally did that. From Waz Lee. Hey dude, could you rename the target section of the Discord to something like people of interest or something? If this group leaks, which it will because they always do, that's a, that's a little bit of irony. Having a section labeled targets isn't a good look. Kraut. Okay. Hey, bro. I was just wondering, can we, could we possibly rename that list you made from people we want to fucking murder and burn their bodies to, like, fluffy bunnies or something? I'm just worried if somebody sees that, they're going to think we're fucking insane. That's some incredible OPSEC in this internet war room. Really locking shit down tight, Kraut. Really, really keeping a fucking leash on things, aren't you, buddy? This is about as well done as your biology video. Okay, I hear you saying. So you've got a Discord full of potentially unstable academic intellectuals and YouTubers with a real fucking hit list for a vendetta. What's the, uh, what's the German mafia here gonna do with it? Well, the descent into complete LARPing madness really takes place almost side by side with each video that's released after the first one. You'll see by the ratings that not only do the likes start to decrease, the dislikes overtake them. Meaning even Kraut's own audience, which was initially on his side, grew so bored with this shit, they just didn't want to watch it anymore. But I'm sure that negative reaction didn't adversely affect these mentally unstable individuals. They can't go too magic missile with this LARPing shit, right? It's not like they created operations, like it was World War II or something. Oh, never mind. Yeah, they actually did that. Let's look at some of the uh, 24-hour ops the Brain Trust here came up with. One of the intellectual elites, a chemist by the name of Zabby, came up with Operation Red Mackerel. Goal. To feed the opposition false or useless information of the movements or acts of the allied forces to gain the trust of the opposition and thereby cause information havoc and distress. Execution. The construction of a shadow server where archived or staged conversations and information will be posted. A SOC account controlled by the allied forces will collect evidence on the shadow server and approach the opposition setting off stage three. Ending in the desired effect, total control of oppositional informational networks. Stage 1. The construction of a shadow server. Over two weeks of staged conversations prior to the next media launch. Stage 2. The collection of evidence to be reviewed by proper channels and greenlit for dispersion. Stage 3. The approach of the opposition by insider forces, trying to feed useless information that was cleared in Stage 2, gaining trust. Stage 4. Feeding false information to cause minor disturbances, using false information that is too good not to be used, and observing the effect on the opposition media. When cleared by proper channels, advance to Stage 5. Stage 5. Feeding information of a high-risk nature, false doxes of allied forces, false nudes, etc. Desired effect. Full control of trusted opposition informational networks. Effective use of counter-espionage tactics to puppet opposition forces. The oppositional informational networks. It's a French guy that streams on YouTube and laughs at people talking about pregnant trouts. Is being treated like he's the fucking Axis powers in World War II. But how deep does this autism go? How committed to this are they? We'll have a crowd explain it. Proposal 1. I am a dissident scientist and would like a conversation. Proposal 2. Set up fake alt-right YouTube channels and have it slam me. Proposal 3. I am a biology student. Proposal 4. I am a biochemist student. This is so fucking retarded. Crow, what the fuck are you doing? I, I, you know, I don't even know if I can read this without a deviant art symbol in the background. This is some will you RP with me colon 3 shit. Young woman. Mid-twenties. Specializing right now in biochemistry at the University of Southampton. Name, Tilly Law. December 30th, 1989 is her birthday. Born in Guilford. Hasn't been there since childhood. Parents live in Wickham. Wickham Church of England Primary School. Studying biology for three years since 2015. Lab assistant from 2010 to 2014. Student travels from 2014 to 2015. Backpacked around the UK. Gotta, gotta throw some small details in there. You know, in case that ever comes up in conversation. H hello 
Hello, Access Forces. I'm a biochemist student named Tilly Law, and I'm defecting from the Allied Forces. You can trust me. I backpacked around the UK. You know, now might be as good a time as any just to take a step back and really think about what you're looking at. <laughs> Look at the reaction they have to somebody laughing at their stupidity or having a different opinion. Look at the detail. They're, they run, they're running operations. Who LARPs like this and doesn't drink bleach immediately afterwards? But if that wasn't autistic enough, they have to take the puppeteering to the next level. Let me introduce you to the convoluted plan. Operation Mincemeat. Now this is, uh, this is some wild shit. Their plan, if I were to sum it up, reading this just ridiculous fucking document, is to leak the idea that Thunderfoot or Sargon are going to make videos. That is the information. They're going to accidentally release this information. And then from there, essentially what they want to have happen is the alt-right reacts and gets angry for some reason. And because the alt-right gets angry, now Thunderfoot and Sargon actually end up making the video. You know, Thunderfoot put up a video talking about being invited into this Discord. He wanted me to install Discord on my computer, which I'd never heard of before, and it's some sort of group chat type thing. Which was getting into quite a bit of an ask at that point, because, you know, now I actually had to do something. Anyway, so I installed Discord on my computer, and it promptly crashed my computer. Which means that maybe the only message I've ever sent on Discord is, is it working yet? And after my computer died and I got it back up again, it was simply, look, I, d I don't have time for this sort of crap. It's probably a really fucking good idea that you didn't stick around. Because they don't give a shit about you, Thunderfoot. They don't care that you're a scientist. They don't care that you actually do shit in real life. You weren't Thunderfoot the scientist to them. You were Thunderfoot the cudgel. They wanted to use you. They thought they were so fucking smart and you were so goddamn stupid that they could puppeteer you into doing what they wanted. They were going to use your subscriber number to their benefit. They didn't give two fucks about what you thought. That's what Operation Mincemeat is. Are you starting to get a handle on the wild shit going on in this Discord? Here's the public presenting face these people give up. That they're, that they're honorable and they're dignified and that they fight the good fight and they have the moral high ground. And yet they create hit lists. They come up with fake doxes, fake accounts to discredit the other side. And then they seek to use people to their own ends without actually informing them of what the fucking plan is. And that's an opinion you'll see expressed by multiple people. Just like Waz Lee said, it looks bad calling it this. Not it is bad to have this, but it looks bad to call it this. Sandre says the same fucking thing. It was stupid to contact UKIP Kraut. Not because I care about Rage After Storm, fuck that bitch, but because I foresaw this situation as a possibility. It's used as ammo. Well, I think the best action is to simply demand evidence. He's not going to be able to deliver. By the way, Jeff Holliday, aren't you a neurology student? With all these intellectual heavyweights, all these YouTube scientists, these internet academics, you figure one of them would have rubbed their brain cells together to come up with uh, a few questions about the morality of what's going on in this morally righteous, anti-race realism crusading server. You won't just have to deal with the alt-right. You'll have to possibly also deal with AIU's scumfucks. These guys have been taking every single fucking opportunity to get at me. I have seen them siding with Sean and Jen. Edgy Sphinx, Christy Winters, and now with the alt-right at large. Whoever currently is trying to come for me, AIU scumfucks follow suit and also go after those I work with. And be warned, AIU scumfucks are probably the single most vile, reprehensible, and disgusting fucking thing on YouTube. Now they're talking about atheism is unstoppable. Listen to that vitriolic hatred they have for them. The worst thing on YouTube. Now compare that statement to this one. Think we could maybe use that to get Devin to go after Edgy? That would be fun. So on the one hand, they're saying that AIU is the worst fucking thing on the internet. And on the other hand, they want to use him to their own benefit. Just like they wanted to use Thunderfoot. Earlier I showed you the three videos and how the dislike ratio had increased as time went on. People became disillusioned with Kraut. They didn't want to hear about it anymore. 
The very last of those videos that he had done ended up getting flagged. Now, multiple people mirrored that video, but it was assumed that the alt-right was behind it. Now, why that is, I can't tell you. Because from what I've seen was them actually enjoying watching his videos. Multiple people loved to pick them apart. If anything, it was a festive mood around them because they liked to laugh at how fucking horrible they were. Nonetheless, Kraut and his friends and people that liked his content made all these public statements decrying how terrible it was that that video was flagged. That flagging that video is just, it's an awful fucking thing. Fast forward just a little bit, and JF releases a video with audio that was leaked from Kraut's server. He's making a video on it. And what do you know? That video gets flagged down. Now, what's the reaction from Kraut and his assorted, assembled academics? Well, first you have the public statements. We didn't flag that. But if it did get flagged, good, it should have. It was illegal. Those were leaked audio recordings. You don't have a right to play them for anyone. A bit of a difference from what was being said in the Discord. I told you, for fuck's sake, report that stream. Now follow that up with this, an admission from the admin in Kraut's own server that he himself actually flagged the video. Habib. Hello. 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 Can you hear me? Yeah, let me just uh, lower your, your audio just a smidge. It's a bit loud. Okay, um, Habib, you were the admin of that server. I was an admin since day one, yes. Yeah, something that you called me yeah. out on as well. Yeah. And I think since JF in here, I think I better explain myself. And yes, I still stand by flagging your video, JF. So it goes from, we didn't do it, but we're glad that it happened, to we should totally do it, to yeah, we actually did do that. But I think the example that personally gets me the most about this sort of behavior that repeatedly happens in his internet war room would be in relation to the New York Times reporter. Now, as Kraut said, on a live stream, this lady had contacted him and he had invited her into his Discord server. I mean, one thing that JF brought up, which is like the sleaziest thing that he got out of his espionage, um, I was contacted two days ago, no, three days ago by a New York Times journalist. Um, since he brought this up in a weird fucking way, I might as well address this as well. She was mainly interested, not really as much as in me, as she was into Joan. She wanted to know the people I work with, so I introduced her to her, and I invited her into the server, I gave her her own thread, and then I asked all the biologists, chemists, and psychologists, and physicists, and what we not all have already, to write a summary about the work, then I asked and um, why they do this. Then I asked all the YouTubers in the server to write a summary of what they are and why they do this and that. Well, that's all well and good. What's the problem with the New York Times? She just wanted to talk to people. Look at them all giving answers. They're just giving some basic background information. She just wants to know about their fight with the alt-right in relation to race realism. And Kraut's more than happy to help her. I mean, that's not hypocritical at all. Oh, fucking wait a second. Wait a second. I seem to remember something that happened not that long ago. I think it was in this fucking year, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. PewDiePie getting his ass fucked by every mainstream media outlet. Boy, it sure would be funny if the New York Times played a part in that. Oh, shit. They fucking did. Well, I, that doesn't mean anything. It's not like Kraut actually made a video where he denounced them doing... Oh, fuck. He did do that. ...men testing boundaries in the angriest corners of the internet from that cancerous, repugnant cesspit known as BuzzFeed. YouTube's monsters, PewDiePie and his populist revolt from the New York Times. The articles all have the same undertone to them. YouTube is infested with Nazis, racists and other vile scum and it is time to strangle YouTube's creators by cutting down on the financial assets available to them. At least he didn't try to boy- oh fuck he did try to boycott them. That's some nice payback Kraut. That's some really fucking great moral grandstanding on your part. So let me see if I get this straight. You want to boycott the New York Times because you think they report unfairly about YouTubers. You go on a fucking tirade about it. PewDiePie retweets you for defending him. And yet, when the opportunity comes to you to use that very weapon that was used against him, against somebody you don't like, you invite that slimy fuck into your server to help her. And you can look at this lady's timeline to see exactly what she was talking about around that timetable. Look at the alt-right terrible goddamn Nazis. Go look at that article and read it, and then try to plead ignorance with me that you didn't know exactly what she fucking wanted to do. Oh, the New York Times is terrible. Oh, it's coming after PewDiePie. We need to fight the power. So what is it? 
Do you really have that opinion, Kraut, or did you just want to suck his dick to get some fucking subs out of it? Listen to your ass talking to Naked Ave about how you responded to a Vice News reporter in relation to all of this. Hello, Mr. Colwyn. No, I am not with the alt-right, and I have spoken out against the alt-right. I have decided to come in support of D PewDiePie together with the overwhelming majority of, you of the YouTube community because he has been a victim of an injustice. He has been slandered and his reputation dragged through the mud by a big media outlet on the basis of a lie. The actions by the Wall Street Journal have been slanderous and flat-out wrong, and anyone with a basic understanding of ethics should be able to see this for what it is. I also believe that that if this course of sleazy actions is allowed to continue unchallenged, it will result in the purge of YouTube uh, by a new media platform, by an old, outdated media, namely the print media. What was done to PewDiePie could have just as well been done to everyone on this platform and will probably be done to everyone on this platform if the Wall Street Journal is allowed to get away with this. Oh, we YouTubers are getting branded. We're getting fucked over. It's terrible what the mainstream media is doing. They're not giving us a fair shake. Here, let me let the fucking New York Times reporter from the same outlet that did this shit to somebody I defended into my Discord server to do it to somebody else. Get fucked. What are you doing? What is this autistic shit? Okay, need to, need to calm down a little bit. Getting a little bit, uh, a little bit heated. When you're knee-deep in digging through this shit, it's, it's hard not to come away with a bit of a stink. And the Spurgery, it, it's been going for a week now. And it's, it's multiplying and expanding. It's like a fucking forest fire on the internet. It just, it won't stop. And there's so much of it, and I can't keep track of it all. We haven't even scratched the surface of it all yet. There, there's so much. There's so much retardation going on that... This this doesn't even begin to cover it. And it's only downhill from here. It is only fucking downhill from here. So tune in for part three when we start talking about vibrating nipple clamps. And no, I'm not making that up. We decided to kick it up a notch with a ball pit. Yahoo! Yahoo is right. Let's rock. Who doesn't love a good trash fire? There's no better way to keep warm during those long winter months than by huddling up close and watching the combustion take place before you. And conventions, well, they fit the bill. Now, there are a myriad of them for almost every subject you could imagine. They come and go all year round. And every once in a while, once in a, a blue moon, you'll come across a convention that devolves into complete and utter madness. And that insanity could include a whole host of things, from furries throwing shit-filled nappies onto people's Subarus, to fat tumblerettes swimming in piss-filled ball pits. But it takes a special kind of retard, I'm talking special ed levels of stupid, to fuck a convention up before it even begins. Typically, the convention actually has to happen first before it can devolve into a shit show. But that's not the case with Kilroy. The free speech event, everybody's been talking about it. All your favorite YouTubers are going to be there. It sounds like a fantastic idea, and for a while, it was a fantastic idea. Until the realization of what it was and what it would become started to fully hit people. The first cracks in the facade came from Tim Poole, when on December 11th, he tweeted this out to his followers. For those attending Kilroy in Phoenix this April, I am pulling out and will not be speaking any longer. Apologies to those looking to see me there. And he quickly followed this up with a, a little bit more of an explanation. They asked for a 16-month non-compete and a three-year NDA. They were willing to negotiate on the non-compete, but not the non-disclosure agreement. They cited safety reasons for the three-year NDA. Strange thing to ask, and I can't trust the reasoning for such an agreement. Now, Tim elaborated even more on this in a video he put up for the people that were coming to see him. I was asked to sign a 16-month non-compete agreement and a three-year non-disclosure agreement in order to participate in this event. I find those contracts very strange. I have a speaking agent. I have numerous contracts for United Talent. I speak at events all the time. In fact, this week in New York, I'm speaking at an event on technology. This is not standard. This is not normal. And I was not given an adequate reason as to why any of these provisions, any of these agreements were, were, were asked to be uh, signed. 
And Tim wasn't alone. Other people that were scheduled to speak said they had issues with the non-disclosure agreement as well. Things a farce. I mean, the majority of the headliners there, actually all of them have spoken in various locations before. Never in my life, I mean, I've been given contracts, but I've never been given an NDA non-compete that spans several years um, to a 100 mile radius. I mean, that's, that's cuckoo banana cakes. Now, the big motivator for Tim as to why he put the tweets up and the video up was to explain to the people that might have pre-purchased tickets or donated money to come see him. He wanted to explain to them why he wasn't going to be there. People donated and were expecting to see me there. I'm obligated to inform them I will not be. People asked why I wasn't going, and I told them. I've kept a lot private here, but I'm willing to publish everything if people are not satisfied. Well, as it turns out, not everybody was completely satisfied. In particular, the organizer of the event. It isn't strange to ask. It's standard practice. I was clear that I'm not willing to risk the anonymity of dissidents whose lives are at risk for attending and speaking at Kilroy. Calling me out in public isn't going to compel me to bend on this. No one called you out. I'm obligated to inform people that thought I was going that I will no longer be there. But it gets stranger still. One of the featured speakers on the Kilroy page, an account called Harambe Desserts, had this to say, Tim Pool is not an ally to ex-Muslims, and he is going around bad-mouthing and lying about Based Mama, who is an ex-Muslim too. On that fact alone and his lies, he is despicable. Hate though, he is just a stupid ass. Not worth hating at all. I don't know about that. All I see is people mocking an NDA that protects ex-Muslims. I mean, how much of an ass butt do you need to be? I don't trust that dude, Tim Pool, as far as I can throw him. He obviously is shady and selfish as anything for making a big deal out of the NDA. I'm fairly certain Tim Pool doesn't know who he's fucking with. Neither did I when I responded to this insane bullshit calling him a bad ally for having issues with an NDA contract. Because I received this response. Dude is in for a rude awakening with us. Oh yes. Don't ever fuck with ex-Muslims. You will regret it. Don't fuck with us. You're gonna regret it. I wonder what she meant by that. You leave us alone, we'll leave you alone. You fuck our shit up, we'll fuck your shit up until you can't fuck our shit up anymore. I'm a former Muslim, a former extremist, a former terrorist supporter. Well, these sound like some stable and well-adjusted individuals. I'm sure I'm just misreading that playful tweet as a threat. I can do a whole lot better for threats if you want. It can be a game. Well, I do love video games, so I couldn't pass that challenge up. And it looks like it was answered. Because yesterday, when I put up a tweet promoting this video and what the topic would be on, all of the sudden, from out of nowhere, a complete and utter coincidence. Videos started getting flagged on my channel. That's rather strange. It's almost like somebody was attempting to shut the channel down so this video couldn't go up. But why would they do that? What would motivate them to want to shut this particular video down? Oh, maybe it has to do with the fact that Based Mama was a part of Kraut Server, the server that was targeting people on the right side of politics. Could, could that have something to do with it? I mean, Based Mama was in there. She admits she was in there. I'm gonna let you know right now. I got invited in. And then I just never left. And good old Halal Desserts here, well, she was uh, somewhat related to it as well. If you remember back when JF's video was flagged for playing audio that was leaked from the server Kraut had, she tweeted this out. I have no idea what I flagged. I hope it was real juicy. Ah ha 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 ha. So we have two individuals directly related to the Kilroy event, one of them the organizer of it, another her good friend and featured speaker at the event, both related to a server which was doing some rather underhanded things. And mysteriously, when I announce my videos coming out, I start getting videos flagged on my account. Really gets that fucking noggin jogging, doesn't it? But I guess I, uh, I'm i getting intellectually checkmated here. This is some 4D chess shit. I'm dealing with intellectual giants. Because my IQ is extremely high. <gasps> it is extremely frustrating to not only be an intellectual anomaly myself, which I guess like, you know, 140 is above average, whatever. You know. Most well-known and credentialed scientists of this YouTube community. But apparently that enormous IQ, it just wasn't enough. People began to either pull out or they were pushed out of the event. The list is so goddamn long that you'd have a better chance naming the people that are still coming rather than the ones that dropped out. Tim Pool, Dave Cullen, Faith Goldie, James Alsep, Andrew Torba, Brittany Pettibone, Millennial Woes, Nick Monroe, Andy Worski and Chris, Peter Sweden, Baked Alaska, Lauren Southern. The names go on and on and on. 
But that's just petty ego. I mean, that's what Mundane Matt told me. These people are just too full of themselves. That's the issue. And then, of course, Sargon dropped out. I haven't been following the recent drama with Kilroy too closely, but I'm going to pull out of it anyway. It seems to be mismanaged. I put $250 into it, but I don't expect to get that back. Fucking Sargon of a God with his goddamn ego issues, huh, Matt? Oh, I'm sorry, what's, what's that? Did you change your position all of a sudden? Matt, is Sargon being a drama whore for pulling out since you said this is mostly an ego <laughs> With Sargon, I'm not too sure. Oh! oh, oh so would I so, do it? Would I do uh, it? And I have Andy, to... Andy, come on. Oh wait, Andy, wait, come on. Let me... Quick, somebody send this clip to V. He's always getting accused of being the Sargon of a Cod dick rider. It looks like he's got a little competition for the job. Well, goddamn, that's a lot of people getting kicked out or dropping out. But was it all because of contracts? Was it all because of the non-disclosure agreement and the non-compete that Faith Goldie and Tim Pool talked about? Well, no, there were a whole host of other issues. People were complaining that they weren't getting their emails answered. They were being ignored. We were getting ignored. A lot of the concerns were, get, were getting ignored until it was put in front of the public. Um, well, I just, I'm sorry. I really, I, that's not a fair representation. They're not, they weren't being ignored. So I sent an email to, to Base Mama. I say, hi, hey, some weird stuff is going on over there, y'all. What is going on? Oh, my buddy's getting disinvited. We can't talk about what we want to talk about. James now, his picture's gone. What's going on, guys? Fill us this in. And I get a response email that is completely blank from Base Mama's account. So what does that tell me? And I responded back to her. I said, hi, it's just so you know, I got a blank email. Don't know if you intended to write something in it, but indeed nothing showed up. But that can't be correct, because as you can hear from Sister Danger and Based Mama, the two people that are working on the event, they never forget to respond to an email. They're professionals. And I'm like, dude, I understand. <laughs> like, <laughs> you don't even have to tell me. Like, I'm at that where, did I miss one? Did I miss one? Well, you know, you talk to me. I'm like maniacally checking to make sure I didn't accidentally not see somebody's email, because I don't want to forget anybody. I agree. Like, I kind of have this general policy of, always be the last person to respond, right? That way the ball is never left in your court as having been dropped or whatever. Like, always be the last person to respond. She left my email unanswered. Well, there's got to be more than just a, a few missed emails. Is there anything else going on? Like, say, being lied to about the panels you can do? I had pitched the idea uh, for, for doing a panel on offensive comedy and where the line is and how we present ourselves online uh, based mama uh, uh, declined immediately. Well, there must be a good reason Andy Worski was told he couldn't do a panel on offensive comedy. Like, say, one of Base Mama's associates was already going to do it, and Andy can go fuck himself. Foxy here, <laughs> who hasn't said shit about fuck this whole time, <laughs> um, <laughs> is going to be on the comedy panel and, and basically discuss, like, how you know, the restriction of free speech in this offense culture is really kind of hampering comedy where you just you can't be as free with it as you want to be. How's that dicking feel, Andy? Probably similar to what James Elsop got when he was bent over and hit with this gem. She said my speech on identitarianism was banned because it was a topic that she didn't want to bring up at the conference. This is, of course, contradicted by the fact that listed in the topic she, she sent me was a speech called The History of Identitarianism in Ireland. I find it funny that... There's been kerfuffle from the alt-right side because I won't entertain a panel on identitarian politics. I'll go ahead and tell you. Here's the reason why. And I told everybody this. We don't have time. We don't have the space. It's not on the agenda. Listed in the topic she, she sent me was a speech called The History of Identitarianism in Ireland. It's just a kerfluffle. Come on. Everybody makes mistakes, and the super genius brain trust over here, they fucked up a little bit. But they're innocent fuck-ups. There's no ulterior motive behind any of it. It's not like this is one giant fucking scam that sucked in multiple groups of people. That would be ridiculous. I mean, listen to Andy. He came up with this idea at VidCon. It was our idea. Um, I was one of the initiators of this idea. It was me, Chris, my buddy who I filmed with, um, Failure, Rucka, and I think, what was his name? A a Tanuki or Toki or something? Failure? What was his name? It starts with a T. Do you know oh, who I'm talking about? Yeah, well, Tanuki. Okay, that's it. It was all of us. 
and we were all at that shrimp place during VidCon, and we were the ones who were like, oh, we should do our own VidCon where it's like all of us and we can meet, you know, viewers and stuff and talk about whatever we want. And then we were all just hanging out outside and Sister Danger was there. We brought it up to her and she's like, that's a great idea. You know, I've done I've done these things before. And then when she spoke to Based Mama and Dave, they sort of took a hold of that. Well, isn't that wonderful? Based Mama is going to help Andy realize his dream to put on this idea for a convention. But wait a minute, though. That's not what Based Mama told Bunty King. This has been in the works for quite a while, <laughs> so... I'm just. How, how long I'm, has it been in the works for? If you mind me asking. About three years. We've been three you know, years. Yeah. Three years. We've been this with, with Dave. No, um, I, I was planning it with Kevin. That's really strange. When I Google VidCon, it shows me that it ran from the 21st to the 25th. And the social media accounts for the Kilroy event went up after VidCon, which would seem to substantiate what Andy Worski is saying. Yet there's Based Mama telling Bunty King this is something she's been working on for three years. Well, that's a bit of an inconsistency. I mean, all she wants to do is help establish this event. Oh, wait, did I say event? I meant business. Most NDAs are indefinite, so I, I put a three-year limit on it because I'm like, well, that's plenty of time to establish our business model and streamline the process so other people can take Kilroy to their cities, you know, and do their thing. And, like, we can help them out with getting contracts and, you know, contracting with vendors and venues and doing all this shit. Like, I was like, yeah, that's cool. Like, we had a fucking plan. It wasn't like we just pulled this shit out of our asses. Yeah, let's franchise that fucker out. Hey, let's take it even further. How about some trademarks and copyrights? What we what we could do is trademark um, our brand for Kilroy slash Kilroy was here. Hell, even throw in a few employment conch, I mean, NDAs and non-disclosure agreements. These contracts are the same as going to going to employment, not the same. I'm sorry, I'm going to really take that back because I already got raked over the coal. That sounds like a recipe for success, but definitely not what Andy Worski and a whole host of other people signing up for this particular event thought when they signed up for it. Ooh, oh God, I'm getting so sleepy here. I'm just going to stop thinking about it. I don't want my ego to get in the way. Hey guys, let's go take a nap. Anybody else getting tired? I mean, all that matters at the end of the day is that business loan gets taken care of. So when I go into these places six months ago, trying to secure spots, they're like, we want a deposit now. So I took out a loan to put down the deposits. So oh, like wow. I'm into this shit for like $30,000 already. <laughs> oh wow, I didn't know that. I don't think well, anybody yeah. knew that. I must have misheard her. I could have sworn she just said that she took those loans out six months ago, which would have been in June, right after VidCon. No, clearly she meant three years ago. Fuck you, Andy Worski. You don't know what you're talking about. I know that look you're giving me. Take the fucking tinfoil hat off. These are all just amazing coincidences. You fucking conspiracy theorist with your crazy shit. I mean, sure, you could look at the timetable and draw some conclusions about what's really going on here and all the lies that we've heard. Or all those other lies. Oh, did I mention all the other lies? Like the lies they told Tim Pool about the contract he was signing? And as I responded to their email, email, I told them it was insulting. To which they responded with an appeal to popularity. Everyone has signed this before you. That's a lie. A lot of the speakers didn't even know this agreement existed. No, they certainly did not sign this before me. Or the whole thing about having to remove people because there just wasn't enough room. I'm sorry, Baked Alaska, we need to trim the fat a little bit. It's too popping off in here for you to stick around. We got too many speakers showing up. And we still have approximately a week's worth of guests that we're going to continue to roll out. And we're still signing people, okay? Then we immediately took Baked Alaska off the website because we were already overbooked, okay? You, you are saying... Tomorrow you have a guest sure. announcement. Yet when things Alaska, you said that there was a scheduling conflict. Yeah, because you guys are overbooked. Already full. And now you're but. still adding people to the roster when you already told people that you were overbooked. No. No. <laughs> That's not a good look. That was a lie that was caught in the very same fucking stream later on. And in other streams too. I'm sure you put all the together an email are, for you. <laughs> Are all the it, it panels is, already scheduled out with all the people that are coming or? No, we left, we intentionally left a good chunk open. It's so weird. It feels like everything about this event might be completely fucking fake. And it only gets worse if you look at the timetable. 
When Dave Cullen put up the initial fundraising video for the Kilroy event on November 16, it only took a matter of three weeks for them to hit the official goal of $85,000. That's fucking impressive. That is a lot of money. December 6th, we've raised all the money we need. And that's just the amount listed up on the website. We're not even talking about PayPal here. Um, you can pledge anonymously without buying a ticket. You can give any amount that you want. I, you know, it's not a big deal. Like, I gotta tell you, I, I appreciate everybody who's buying tickets, but I appreciate more people who can't be there that are still supporting it. Like, that, to me, that's so awesome. So you've got all these big YouTubers from a diverse group of people that are bringing in all this audience for you. And all these people are paying enormous amounts of money to meet people they want to see in real life. If you look at the rewards on the website, that's clearly listed. And yet, strangely, so very strangely, a majority of people start to run into issues. It starts with Baked Alaska, who was up on the website for a day or two. Just long enough for his followers to donate money, but not long enough for him to figure out what the fuck is going on. Let me clue you in, Baked. You got used like a puppet. Just like everybody in this situation got fucked over. You've all been bamboozled. You are a nice shiny object to wave out in front of retards to get the money to come in. And then once the money came in, suddenly we have issues. Panels aren't showing up. Emails aren't going out. Ridiculous contracts are being forced on people. It's almost like they wanted to use YouTubers for marketing. This is a very important concern <laughs> right here, is um, a lot of the, uh, of the donations were made under the promise that uh, under the promises that certain guests would be appearing uh and you put the, the guest list up there and people saw who were who, who was on that list and donated to see mm -hmm. certain people and then as people start pulling out and as as you know all these complications are happening doesn't it seem like the donations and the event itself was made under a you know false promotion i wanted to put people up for the crowdfunder that people kind of knew you know like they could see them and knew who they were um just as part of the marketing and then i didn't i didn't i didn't go out of my way to show that there were academics who were actually attending that we're going to be talking about other things and not on youtube not internet celebrities or whatever so we've got like a reward system in the works and, and meeting up with people is going to be one of the uh, one of the rewards. So they could fund academics who weren't as popular. I'm trying to be amenable to them as much as I can, but they're not really that big and they're not really that influential, especially when we're we're courting like academics, like actual academics, not pretend YouTube academics. Like We're actually going for people who are actually like researching in these fields and making progress in, in these areas and actually like working for this. Well, don't make so them I'm not like super fire concerned fire. about it because yeah. that's, well, the, the problem is, like I said, I think my, the biggest mistake I made was not making it clear that this is not a YouTube convention. And no. a lot of like, we can't list a lot of people that are on there that are very left leaning because they're a fucking security risk. That's why I open called. I didn't want just people who are YouTube famous. YouTube famous, internet famous, that doesn't mean anything. To well, the only thing that could make this shit show worse if there was a political angle on it. I mean, we fucked over YouTubers and bilked their audience for money. But could we fuck over political opponents just for the fun of it? Well, I think we could if we follow a few steps. Now, if you remember Kraut Server with all his magnificent 24-hour ops like Purple Starfish or whatever the fuck he called this dumb shit, Based Mama was in there. She was right in that fucking server, and in that server, there was a hit list. And surprisingly, a good amount of the people on that hit list were signed up to show up at the event. People like James Alsip, Baked Alaska, Lauren Southern. These people and their audiences donated money or bought tickets. They were used to help promote this. I wonder if she has any political opinions on these people. Okay, first of all, there's about 70% of the people on there that I don't politically align with, and there's a couple of them, I won't name names, that I actually do not like as a person. Because I think it'll be great to kind of bring social justice back to where it's supposed to fucking be. Yeah, I agree. I agree. <laughs> Girl power. Let's bring social justice back to where it needs to be. Fuck those white nationalists. But don't fuck their money. We need their money. We have a $30,000 business loan to pay off and trademarks to apply for. Well, Jim, that doesn't prove any malice on her part. Well, as she said, she is Kilroy. Because at the end of the day, Kilroy is just me. And the Kilroy social media page that's up only has like 130 tweets. 
So it's really weird then, isn't it, that a social media account used to promote a free speech event would be retweeting Kraut and T advertising his Dirty Trick server. If she's calling the shots, and this is her event, and her event is officially promoting him by retweeting him on their official fucking account, raises a few questions, doesn't it? It's a twofer, really. You get a bunch of gullible YouTubers to promote your event, which you let them think is actually their event, but you have no real intention of ever letting them show up and speak. Now, you go about this by a myriad of different ways, by making panels inaccessible, losing emails, creating contracts which are just purely ridiculous in the hopes that it will drive them away or anger them to make room for all those top-tier intellectual academics that you've always dreamed of gathering together in one place to have 48 panels on Muslim this and Muslim that. And you also get to take all this money from right-wing sources which you disagree with, people you find abhorrent, and then basically just throw them off the website. Kick them off, remove their name, it doesn't matter, you've already got the cash. Sometime last week I was dropped from the Kilroy speakers list without notice. That's how you know you're dealing with true professionals. Seems pretty cut and dry to me. For that three-week period of fundraising, there weren't contracts sent out. There weren't NDAs discussed. Everybody seemed to be taken by surprise at the very end, after the money was gathered. Then, once the money was in that bank account, suddenly we have issues. Suddenly we need to clear some room, make some space for the important people, not you fucking YouTubers. You don't matter. But hey, you've still got things to look forward to at Kilroy. I mean, sure... Sargon's not going to be in the ball pit. That's a bit disheartening. I think we all really wanted to see him just swimming around in his natural environment, but sadly that's just not going to happen. But at least he can show up for the fights. The good old fisticuffs. I'm talking Jeff Holiday throwing down with Coach Red Pill. Can you, can you just not be a pussy about it? You know something? I'm going to go to the Kilroy event. Okay, good. Come to the Kilroy event. I'm going to go to the Kilroy event, and I'm going to look you up. When, when you find me at Kilroy, that you were just saying, Coach, that you're going to come find me at Kilroy, what are you going to do when you find me? You're going to give me a big old sloppy kiss? Mm -hmm. You'd love that, wouldn't you? Oh, yeah. I love older men. So what are you going to do? you saying you're going to come and you're going to find me at Kilroy. What are you going to do? Are we going to have a chat? Are you going to buy me a burger? You'll be talking, but I won't be talking much, probably. Okay. So you're going to, you're going to patiently sit there and you're going to listen and, and absorb everything that I have to say and... That'd be great. Cool. Sounds good. Is that it? Is that all you're going to do when you, when you come to Kilroy, man? Or Johnny Fox taking on Monday Matt? Here's the, I, 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 I thought, I thought this, like, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Johnny, you want to have this conversation in person, dude? I'm all for it. Get your ass to oh, Phoenix fuck in yeah, fucking April. For right, whether you're going to Kilroy 1 or Kilroy 2, whatever Andy's know, making, why don't you come on out? Why don't you come on out? Come on out. Well, I'm a come on out, sir. Well, that is my, that's my suggestion. Come on out. Come on out. Come on, let's have a conversation. Come on, get on that plane, Johnny. Get on that iron horse. Get your ass out of Phoenix. Come on. That sounds like some good old fun. Who doesn't want to watch people beat the shit out of each other? This sounds like a fantastic event. And hopefully, Kilroy's a great success for them because they're going to need the money, you know, with breaking the law and all. Oh, did I, did I forget to mention that part? You know that three-week crowdfunder they had where they had a ton of people's names up, raising money to show up at the event, and how they sent contracts out after that, after December 6th, after the money had been raised? Turns out that might have been completely fucking illegal. Don't take my word for it. Ask Based Mama. But then I got a second problem, which I found out the other day, is I can't advertise people that I don't have signed on to speak. Yeah. Because that would be violating false advertising laws in Arizona. So if I'm understanding this right, she's basically admitting that she illicitly raised $85,000. Brilliant. That is 140 IQ, ladies and gentlemen. Because my IQ is extremely high. <gasps> it is extremely frustrating to not only be an intellectual anomaly myself, which I guess like, you know, 140 is above average.